What's Gucci everybody, it's AJ here again, and today I want to make part two of my hashing series, and it's going to be about open addressing or linear probing. Now in the last tutorial, I showed you how a hash table can be used to store things in a table, in that you have a, you have a key, and that somehow, that goes through a calculation, which can be known as a black box, and then based on that calculation, a number gets spit out, and that can get stored in a table index, such as an array. So zero, and then let's say the table has size n, minus one. And it can go in one, and it could be 100, apparently. And basically, so even though we try to make these calculations as different as possible, depending on the key values, it is still possible that different keys could generate the same calculation value. And basically, we want to talk about how to handle that and how to still organize that data. So if I erase all this, we can start on that. And this is known as open addressing or linear, linear, I guess, probing. Now, basically, if there is a calculation that equals something that we've already we've put a key in, and then we put in another key and a value, and there, those two keys, and it looks at that key, it looks at the calculation, it does the calculation, and the index has already been occupied, the index is not null, then we want to look at maybe increment the calculation by one, and if that index is empty, we want to store it at that index. And basically, this is an algorithm we can use for looking at hashing in our table, known as a hash table, obviously. So one, we can compute the index by um, calculating the hash hash code. This is the pseudocode. Sorry, I should say this stuff. By calculating the hash code, it's known as, or just your calculation. And then two, we can check if I'm going to put it if, because this is big pseudocode. I'm going to put a capital if. If it is null, the item, or the item is not occupied, the slot is not occupied, and you can store it. And then else, um, increment the position and check if it's empty. And if it's not empty, and if it is empty, you can store it there. But if it's not, continue incrementing. So while, you could have a while loop around this that checks while your slot is empty, while you do not have the slot, the current slot you're at is not null. All, you can increment the position and look at it that way. Sorry, I was just I guess I'm changing my pseudocode on the fly because I'm thinking of a better algorithm as I go. Now, one important thing I may add is that you want to make sure that as you increment your position, you don't go over the length. So if the length is n, you don't want to go to n plus one or n because you can't access the nth element of an n or of an n size array. You can only access n minus one, zero to n minus one. So what you want to do is make sure you use the modulus operator of the t the length of the table. So if the length which which should be n if n is the length. So you want to make sure you're use your table, use table, for instance, I'll show you here in a little example, this is in Java, but it's pretty much, this can be used in, in other languages as well, table.length, you could use that because you want to make sure that if you increment, for instance, if you're at the very end of the table, that you go to position zero and then check so then you can go from the top side to position 0, to position 1, to position 2, and then check the whole array. Now, obviously, if you're putting something in the hash table and it's full, you will not be able to store anything in it. You will not be able to store anything because you will not find a not null position. 
because they'll all be full. And so what you need to do is you need to make the either make the table bigger and think about that. And that is another thing about hash tables that I will give it, be getting into later, such as how to prevent collisions or how to prevent full tables. And you want to make your table very, very much, much bigger than maybe the number of elements you are expecting the store so you don't have to worry about at in any case if it fills up or that there is a lot of incrementing to get to an all position now if you want to access an out an item in a hash table there's a different algorithm again one you want to compute the hash code i will call it the calculation to get to the table and then if the table if that index is null the um you know the item is not in the table because you haven't seen anything and you should at least see something at that index if you expect there to be an item and then you can have an else if the ta the table the table, the index in the table is equal to the item you are searching for. You have found the ta you have found your item. And the else statement is if you have found something in the hash table at that index, but it is not what you are looking for, it is not the item. You can continue to search by incrementing the index because that is the same way you stored things so you know that hopefully in your algorithm that you didn't have to you didn't increment by much and that your item is close is close behind so to search to put things in and to search things you're using the same incrementing feature if a position is already filled up Okay, guys, that is linear probing. I hope you enjoyed that. Remember that you should be using the modulus operator for table wrap for table wraparound, and make sure to check if the table is full because obviously that could cause very bad problems and it could cause an infinite loop, and your program would never work. Okay, guys, thank you, and look out for my next video.